Hello Europe, it's William calling from Wooby Blogs, and I'm joined by Angus in the north of England and Denise in the Netherlands. The three of us may look hungover, but that's because we've just survived Super Saturday, where seven countries staged Eurovision selections, and now we're going to talk about the mother of them all, Melodie Festivalen. The first semi-final took place in Gothenburg, and Eric Sada advanced direct to the final, along with Jessica Anderson. Now, Angus, let's take this one by one. What do you think of Eric? I think he really show on on stage. Like, considering it was a really strong semi-final, surprisingly strong, Eric made it work. Like, he turned out, and like, he earned his keep. He could have sent, like, anything and just relied on celebrity, but Sting is a good song. Denise, you're nodding. Yeah, I love the song. I love him. I just love it. He was amazing, and I know his voice is bad, but he has some backing, backing vocals, so it was perfect in the end, and yeah, I just love it. I'm a fan. He also had an army on stage. There were like 20 dancers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, Sweden obviously doesn't follow the rule of six people per you know performance as at Eurovision, but I wonder how many backing vocalists he had. Well, this is like, aren't they? They're allowed backing tracks, though, at the Scandinavian national selections. Like, it doesn't have to be live backing vocals. Like, that was thing, like, with Margaret Berger, if you remember, in 2013, uh -huh. they had the whole concern if she'd be able to sing it live. So I think, because you can see, he's not actually singing when he's on, like, the massive canopy thing being swung around. Mm. He's, actually, he's lip syncing that. But, so, I mean, yeah. he's a good lip syncer, so. <laughs> <laughs> One of his many talents, moving his body and his lips with no sound coming out. <laughs> Um, I must say, the full performance is way better than the 30-second clip they showed us the other day, because after the 30-second yeah. clip, I think we were all kind of ill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just like, the 30-second clip showed up the worst bits of Eric's, like, abilities, it's just like that long note on Sting in the Chorus, when, like, he can't carry that note if it's just held on its own. But then you put the whole song together, and it's just like, the jazz horns, let's dance! Yeah. <laughs> Nobody Even my about. mom loved it. I showed it to her just a few minutes ago, and she said, oh, it's a great song. <laughs> so, yeah, if all the people like it, well. <laughs> now, can I ask you guys a question? Do you listen to the lyrics when he's singing? Um, I mean, too far. when I first heard the lyrics, I thought the sting was something entirely different, and a part of Eric's body would make you sting. Oh, but, like a yeah, vaginal I sting. Yeah, a little bit like, it's going to sting so bad in the morning when you wake up, honey. And I was just a bit like, oh my god, Eric, why are you doing this? But now I'm kind of into it. <laughs> Denise? Um, I don't read the lyrics. No, I'm just focusing on the music itself, on his voice and the performance and... Uh, no, no, yeah, no, not really. <laughs> the other thing I thought was interesting is that the at the end of the song, he's lifted in the air and the confetti starts to fall. It's almost like SVT has already named him the winner of Melody Festival in 2015 um, with the celebratory staging. Do you think it's rigged for Eric? It's kind of rigged, but it's like, it's what Denmark did with Emily in 2013. Like, you know, where the fire sparks, like only teardrops already looked like the winner before it had even been on stage. It's that kind of like thing. But then we say that, but then Molly, like, was incredible at the start of the show. So I feel like maybe the production values are just higher this year than last year. Yeah. Well, I hope he's going to win, but I don't think he will. He's, like, the big favorite now, but um, I also liked Elena last year. And, well, they were kind of tired of her. I don't know. And maybe the same is with Eric right now. Yeah, it's so hard to predict. We always point out oh. that Lorene performed last in her first semi-final, and so people think SVT puts the favorite there. Mm -hmm. But you, you never really know, do you? Um, mm -hmm. Now, my cat just opened the door. I need to close it. Sorry. <laughs> the other act advancing direct to the final was Jessica Anderson with Can't Hurt Me Now. You guys, every time she said, can't hurt me now, I'm over you, I was like, I am over you. This is like something Faith Hill sang in the 1990s. It's just so dated. It's like, it's very traditional, I give it that, but I think this is like classy rather than classic, if that makes sense. Like she has a whole like kind of Jessica Rabbit vibe. She's like, she's using sex. She's in like the dress. It's just her on stage. And I'm like, you can't hurt me now. She's just like, to all the hits. She's talking about you, William, when she's like that. She's like, you can't <laughs> hurt me now. Well, I'm gonna try to hurt her. I'm gonna throw stones. I'm gonna throw words. <laughs> I don't want to see her win Melody Festival. In. Uh, yeah, but fame was dated and I loved 
fame and i still do it's a great song so and i also really like jessica and i mean her voice is incredible and i really loved it first i wanted to <laughs> she definitely went for gold um i also liked how the microphone was like studded with silver sequins mm. <laughs> kind of tacky <laughs> no it's amazing <laughs> <laughs> Well, she's got the bling, but does she have a song that will stand out, you know, four or five, six weeks later? Mm, I mean, no. No, she's not going to stand out that much in the final. This is not like a standout. It doesn't sound modern, as we went out. Like, it is nice to have it there because it is like a staple of any Melodia Festival and final, but it's not a winner by any stretch of the imagination. Can't we just trade it with a Denmark song? Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> There was a lot going on tonight, and we're keeping it in Sweden for now, y'all. Um, so, yes, any other thoughts on Jessica before we move on? I just, the gold dress needs cinching. Oh, oh, oh and oh, she oh, looks oh. really young. Does that mean she normally looks old? <laughs> no, but um, fame was more than 10 years ago, and it looks like she didn't age. Ah, that's true. It's like the anti-celebrity. You know, most of them start yeah. drinking and doing drugs, but she's had water, Evian, and spas. Um, and Botox. Lots of Botox. <laughs> mm, probably. Brilliant. Well, Botox, of course, makes you um, your skin quite smooth. And speaking of smooth skin, we have Dolly Style, who made it to Andra Shonson. Now, let me start this off by saying this was amazing. I was completely shocked because I thought it was going to be too cutesy, immature, a little bit boring, but they really brought it. I thought they had fantastic vocals and they could harmonize. They worked as a group. Um, I was pleasantly surprised. They were incredible. Like, they above and beyond surpassed expectations. Like, the final was always going to be a hard ask in that semi final, I think, for them. But Andrew Johnson is, like, so well deserved for them. Like, really good choreography, really good song, just really good fun. Yeah, I love the dollies. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, guys. I really, really hate it. I mean, I am Holly, I am Polly. What a song. <laughs> it's a deep message. They're saying they're every girl. They're just like you, Denise. They're Holly, they're Polly, they're Molly, they're Denise. It's universal. I am Denise, I am William, I am Angus. Hello, hi. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> so you would prefer to say hello, goodbye, it seems. <laughs> Yeah, please. <laughs> do you think either? Do either of you think this can challenge an Andre Johnson? I know we don't know the other songs mm -hmm. yet, but it's definitely yeah. a final. Like especially with four acts advancing from Andre Johnson this time instead of two, like they field will. is wide open for them to make it through. Yeah, yeah. I feel it's going to be really hard for them not to make the final. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they're just like they have that whole like social media thing behind them. But also, as we were saying, like young viewers, it really appeals to them, and the demographic for young viewers is expanding at Melodia Festival, and so big opportunity for them. And no offense to Sana Nielsen, but when was the last time we had a young, fresh girl at Eurovision from Sweden? I mean, there was Anna Bergendahl. We all know how that turned out. Um, so I think it's time for like some fresh, young Swedish female blood to bring it. Exactly. They've got like they've got it all, and it's just something different. Like everyone made the Ohio comparisons, but I much prefer "Hello Hi" to either of Ohio's songs. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Denise has gone silent. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm just going to shut up. <laughs> I think she's just like, engaging. Well, yeah. moving on to a song I think we can all potentially hate. It's the other Andre Johnson qualifier, Barong Miri featuring Victor Crone with Datorari Intafor, um, which means something I don't know. Now, Angus, what did you think <laughs> of this group? Oh my god, I was so shocked that qualified. Like, it's embarrassing when you get upstaged by a featured artist and Bayrang literally got outshone by Victor at, like, every turn. Like, that song's appalling. Like, uh, the popper song, much more deserved to qualify. And even, like, Molly especially. Like, it was a poor entry. I don't know what Sweden's thinking. I'm just no. assuming this is somebody trolling the contest. <laughs> the song is really bad. But I really like Berang as a person. I mean, he seems really fun and nice. And I think that's why people are voting for him. It's true. I think a lot of people remember 2013 and how charismatic he was with Yala yeah. Tatsasawa. Um, and that was great. The melody was upbeat and sweet. Whereas this is like, I don't know, it's rap. Yeah. It's like dark rap. It's like... Mm. I, you know, it started with a really unflattering crotch shot, <laughs> but the song is worse than even that. And, like, I've said it a million times, but I don't like rap in English, let alone in Swedish. It just, it does not work for me on any level. 
It's just, it's a bit like Grease's song from 2011. You remember Watch My Dance? Like, it has that whole slightly awkward vibe to it of, like, rap, but they're trying to take it too seriously, and it just doesn't quite work for me. Yeah, I don't see this um, advancing to the final. I think maybe... Oh, that's like, this is staying in Andrew Chanson. Yeah. Moving along to the non-qualifiers... What? Was that me? <laughs> Was that Satan? <laughs> that today, Satan. Oh my god. Don't say anything bad about Baron Miri. And sadly, not everyone could advance in the competition, so now we have to talk about the non-qualifiers who are sitting at home stewing. Now, the first among them, and I'm totally upset about this, is Ricard Soderberg and Elise Reed with a one by one. Now, Sweden needs to be kicked out of the EU. They have broken my heart. They have broken the soul of this competition by getting rid of them. What do you guys think? They were amazing. They were great. And I don't know what's going on in Sweden, but they had to be in the finals. At least Andra Hansen. It's so sad. So sad. I mean, it says, like, I think it's totally justified because Ricard um, just Instagrammed that thing where he was like, terrible show, terrible singers, like, outrage. And, like, deservedly so. Like, I thought the vocal performance was really good. That was a really good, like, hybrid song with the whole, like, pop opera thing going on. And just, like, I was so sad. Like, that pulls on my heartstrings. I really loved that. Yeah, their preview was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> And when I uh, saw them at first, I was like, oh my god, what will this be? They look, oh well, he looks horrible, Mm. but it was perfect. And it was really quite emotional. The end of the song, they looked at each other like, job well done. You can tell they've grown really close through the process. And it's like, you wouldn't expect death metal chick and like, gay opera star to be besties, but they are. BFF forever at Melfest. Hashtag. Um... (laughs) But yeah, even the staging was amazing. I liked how she was in dry ice and then disappeared. And then there was like this bright rainbow. This was this was just perfect. I'm really upset. I don't know what Swedes were thinking. They actually won our fan poll. We had a 16-hour uh. flash, you know, poll. Who do you want to win tonight? Advance. And they came number one, beating Eric Sada. Um, yeah. But I guess we have a lot of foreign readers who are outside of Sweden mm-hmm. um, and have taste. No offense. Um <laughs> Do you guys hope that they'll continue working together post Melody Festival then? I would love them to work together again, like really good. I think just maybe a little less smoke machine. I don't know if kind of like they got swallowed by the smoke and lost in the dry ice. <laughs> and please come back next year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although I don't know if they will after Ricard's Instagram. He sounds a little bit pissed off. What do you think? No, he what, should be. He should be. But why do you think the Swedes didn't go for this? Is it because they don't have the name of Barong Miri? Is it because they're not as cute as Holly Molly Polly Dolly? I feel like both have like a role to play. Like I think names we underestimate. Like if it's a domestic competition, of course you vote for the celebrities. And Ricard and Lisa are not as big stars as like Eric or Jessica. And like Dolly Style have that unique, I guess, like visual quality to them. And Barong again is a star. Yeah. I mean, they did come fifth, like, they weren't in the bottom, but, you mm-hmm. know, I would not be surprised if the voting was really close between them, actually, like, kind of between them all bunched together. Like, Eric will have won in a landslide, but I can imagine the voting yeah. otherwise being quite tight. Yeah. Well, let's put our tears aside and move on to the lady in red, Molly Pedersen Hamar with I'll Be Fine. Now, unfortunately, she was not fine this evening. Her dress was rather low cut. If you were sitting on the front row, I think you would have seen more than you bargained for. What went wrong for Molly? I, I am at a loss. I mean, me, Porg, and Chris, which is kind of interesting, like three of the deputies, all had exactly the same opinion, that she sounded exactly like Ella Henderson, who's a huge star in the UK at the moment. And we just were all like blown away by it. I think she did lose control of the notes towards the end of the song. Like the big notes were maybe a little bit too big. And also going first, I think, is always problematic as like a death mm-hmm. especially in such a small semi-final. I think that almost makes it worse. Yeah. And she reminds me of last year's girl. Um, I don't know. Was Felicia something? I don't know. Do you remember her? Also a Melody Festivale. It was yeah, quite similar to this song, and I also really like that song, and it ended up last in the semi-final. But I think... Oh, Felicia something. <laughs> 
You've put your yeah. finger on it. We talk about that girl, Felicia something. We've heard it all before. I can't yeah. remember what this girl's song sounds like. I remember she had a pretty face, big thighs, good voice. <laughs> She's not with us any longer. So, <laughs> hot damn, sorry, sayonara. Okay, <laughs> now finishing in last place, unlucky number seven was Daniel Gildenlow with the song Papa. Now, this was just creepy to me. Like, I know you're supposed to connect with the audience, but it's like he was staring at us. He was just like, oh, that's terrifying. Like, I took me back to Axel here, Sue, like yes. with the whole mother thing, like freaking terrifying parent problems. Like, seriously, get some independence. Like, how old is he? Like, 30 or caring about his papa and just like set out on his own and do it for himself and he should do his own thing and like oh no creepy creepy with a capital c <laughs> yeah it was horrible i hated it i don't know it was just really really bad he deserved last place the C could also be for cringe. I just, he put no effort into his costume outfit. I get the whole, I'm a hippie, laid back, I don't care. But he just looked dirty. Like, change your earrings, you know, polish your metal around your wrists. Like oh, It's just like, the one thing to take away from the performance was, man bun, man bun, I have got a man bun. And that was like, <laughs> eh, like, fuck all, seriously. Never. This is Melodia Festival, and this is not sing boringly into a camera. Ellen Benedictson did that last year, and she dropped that, like, hot shit. Like, seriously. She also, like, wore a dead bird around her neck. Do you remember? Yeah, exactly. Gross. Like, picked up some roadkill on the way into the stadium or something. It was like, oh, my God, cute, chic, alternative. And it was like, ah, you look horrible. <laughs> of course, this year she's come to Melody Festival and dressed as a whore. So, you know, what a difference a year makes. Um, watching the press conference video, it was so obvious. Like, it makes me question, who is the real Ellen Benedictson? Is she the sweet girl with the dead bird from last yeah. year? Or is she this hussy this year um, in the hot pants? I didn't recognize her. It's like she had body oh, surgery or something. It's just I feel yeah. as well with Molly, since she's more interesting than Daniel's an unqualifier. I get real like Amandine feels. Like I feel like she was just thrown under the bus to give a good lift to the semifinal because everyone was like, "Oh my god, this is incredible!" Like Melody Festival in 2015 is going to be great because she was this big, powerful singer. But she was just kind of there to like, I guess, assert the credentials of the national selection without actually qualifying. If that makes sense totes well we've come to the end of this review of the first semi-final of melody festival in 2015 but we will be back next week with more opinions and reactions and we hope you will join us thank you to angus thank you to denise and congratulations to molly holly polly eric and the others who have moved on good night bye, bye.